What's up, Redemption Kids? Pastor Robin here. Planty is actually doing something for us at the moment. And so we'll check in on him in a little bit. But I have a, a fun challenge for you to do as we start our lesson. Okay? I need you to go find materials to build a pillow fort or a tent that you could sit in for the entire lesson. Okay, so you need a, a pillow, you might need uh, uh, blankets, uh, bed sheets, maybe a chair, um, whatever you need, I need you to go find it and build that pillow fort. Okay, so press pause, Planty already started working on ours. You okay in there, Planty? Yeah, I'm alright. So he's doing uh, work for us. Um, press pause and go build a pillow fort. And we'll see you in a few moments, all right? So go make that pillow fort. So this is the fort that Planty made for him and I. Where are you guys? Oh, there you guys. So this is the tent or the pillow fort that we made uh, together. Uh, Planty likes to call it a club that he created um, it's, it's kind of small and we're kind of squished, but it's really, really cool. And I hope you made a tent or a pillow fort as well. Um, thank you so much, Planty, for doing this for us. Maybe it took you, um, 10 minutes to do it. Maybe it took you longer for you to do it, but it took work, right? It took work to create the fort. You had to go and get the supplies. You might have asked for help. It took time to create the tent. But once we created it, we both were able to fit inside the tent. This week, we'll learn how God's people was asked to build a tent so the presence of God could fill it. And that tent was called a tabernacle. Let's get into our story of how God used the tabernacle for his presence. Uh, Plenty, is it okay if I go back to my chair? Thankfully, he said yes. I'll see you there. Well, I had to get out of the tent, but feel free to stay in your tent. If you haven't made it already, go ahead, press pause, and make it. As we learn this story, it's helpful to remember our big picture question, right? Can anyone remember it? What is worship? Can you say it with me? What is worship. Say it one more time. What is worship? And the answer is this. Worship is celebrating the greatness of God. It's a celebration, right? Worship is the celebration of the greatness of God. God is great. He is the greatest person who has ever existed or ever will exist. He is all-powerful and He loves us. He alone deserves our worship because of the one who He is and what He has done. Last week we learned that God's people were not very faithful to Him, right? Moses was gone for a while and the people chose to worship an idol instead of God. And so God disciplined his people for worshiping a golden calf. And he disciplined them because he loved them. Maybe your parents disciplined you for something. But they don't do that because of 
they don't like you, but because they love you so, so much. This week, we'll learn that God had plans to dwell with his people. He gave them special instructions for building a place where that would happen. And so our, t- our story today is called The Tabernacle Was Built. Right? The Tabernacle Was Built. This is where I want you to go find your Bible and open it up and let's read it together. Even if you don't know how to read, go find your Bible and I will read it for you. Our lesson today again is called, The Tabernacle Was Built. And we're in Exodus chapter 35 through 40. Exodus, which is the second book of the Bible, uh, Exodus 35 through 40. God's word says this. When Moses was on the mountain with God, God said, Tell the Israelites to make a tabernacle for me so that I may dwell among them. And God gave Moses very specific instructions for building a tabernacle. The tabernacle would be really, really Big. It would be a big tent that the Israelites could take with them. The tabernacle would be where God met with his people. Make it exactly like I show you, God said. So Moses gathered all the Israelites together. He told them everything God had said. He asked them to bring the materials. Remember the materials that we had to bring to make the fort? I had cardboard and planty and tables and chairs. And for the tabernacle, the tent that God asked them to bring was gold and silver and bronze and blue and purple and scarlet yarn and fine linen and goat hair, animal skins, wood, oil, spices, and gemstones. This is all the things that they needed to make this tabernacle for God. And God gave two men. Bezalel and Oholabib. There were special skills. They had special skills for building and creating things. And so these men and all other skilled craftsmen came together to build the tabernacle of God. And at the same time, people, people kept bringing offerings of what they had to offer. Pretty soon, the craftsmen came to Moses and said, the people are bringing more than enough. We don't need all of this. So Moses told the Israelites to stop bringing their offerings. They built the tabernacle just as God instructed. The tabernacle had ten curtains made out of linen. Ten curtains. Can you imagine that? How many curtains do you have in your house? Do you have more than ten? I don't know. But guess what? Each curtain was 42 feet long. 42 feet. How tall are you? Maybe three, four, five feet? This curtain was 42 feet long. That's very long. 11 curtains made out of goat hair formed a tent over the tabernacle. And inside the tabernacle, the people made a vial. 
They made an ark, a table, a lampstand, and many other parts. See, every part of the tabernacle, every part of the tent had a special purpose. And it was made just as God had said. And so these people, they made a tent. What is this tent called? A tabernacle, right? When the time came, God told Moses how to set up the tabernacle. God told him uh, to uh, anoint the tabernacle so that it would be holy. Question, what does anoint mean? Anoint means to pour oil on. Right? It means pour oil on. And what does holy mean? Holy means set apart. Okay? So God told Moses to bring his brother Aaron and his sons to the entrance of this giant, giant pillow fort. Or this giant, giant tent. Or this giant, giant tabernacle is what they called it. And so... Aaron and his sons came to the tabernacle and they put on their holy garments and Moses anointed him to be a priest. Aaron's sons were also anointed to serve God as priests. And Moses did exactly what God commanded and the tabernacle was finally, finally finished. My pillow fort, my cardboard tent did not take as long as this tabernacle, right? God had led the Israelites from a cloud and now the cloud covered the tabernacle. God's glory filled the tabernacle. God made a sign for the people. If the cloud covered the tabernacle, the people would stay where they were. And when the cloud lifted from the tabernacle, the Israelites would move and take um, uh, their uh, take and move the tabernacle with them. And so the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle during the day and the fire inside the cloud at night. And all the Israelites could see it as they traveled. Wow, maybe that was a word that you didn't know, tabernacle. But now you know what tabernacle means, right? It's a a tent that was used by God's people to fill his presence with. After our story uh, last week, it may have seemed like God's people were hopeless, right? Thankfully, their hope and future were not dependent on their own ability to obey. Their hope and future were secure because of God's love and faithfulness. In fact, despite the people's sin, God told his people how to build the tabernacle where he would dwell with them. See, God wanted to be with his people back then and today. How amazing is that? That God told his people how to build the tabernacle where he would dwell with them. See, God wanted to be with them, even though that they had proven they were not always going to obey them. And as they began to build and build and build, God blessed them. He gave the people generous hearts that wanted to give. It's better to give than to receive, right? He also gave craftsmen the knowledge and the skill they needed to make the beautiful decorations just as God wanted them. 
That means that God did not just give them the instructions of what to build. He also gave them the ability to build it. Where making a fort is hard. Making a tabernacle is even harder. But God provided. God gave them people that knew what to do, how to build. We have great uh, men and women uh, and kids in our church that know how to build. We're really blessed for that. See, God gave them the ability to build it. His power and, and faithfulness working through them uh, provided them with a place to worship God and interact with Him. The tabernacle was very, very important. It was a very important place for the Israelites. It served as a, a physical reminder that God was with them wherever they went. It was also the location that they could gather to learn about God and offer sacrifices to deal with the sin in their lives. But today, we have something much, much better than the tabernacle, right? Actually, we have someone better than the tabernacle. Can you guess who this someone is? Jesus, right? Jesus is better. See, God told the Israelites to build a tabernacle where he would dwell with them. Meaning, where God would be with his people if they made this tabernacle. The truth is, God desires to be with his people. God desires to be with you. And as part of his plan to, to save sinners, right? What are sinners? Sinners, uh, we're all sinned because we've all gone against God's rules. So as a part of his plan to save sinners, God sent Jesus to tabernacle or dwell with people on earth. See, Jesus came to earth as a baby and dwelt with people. And he lived a perfect, perfect life. Do you think it's easy to live a perfect life? No, it's not. But Jesus did it. He never disobeyed God and always did what was right. Then, even though, uh, even though he did not deserve death, right? Jesus didn't deserve death, but he laid down his life. Jesus chose to die. He did not, he did not deserve death though. Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty for sin that we deserve. But the good news is on the third day, God raised Jesus from the dead. God raised Jesus from the dead, proving that his sacrifice was perfect and complete. See, when we believe in Jesus, God forgives our sins and sends the Holy Spirit to live in us. And that can be kind of confusing, right? That basically means that God lives not just near us, or around us, but He lives in our hearts. How neat is that? Because of Jesus, and our faith in Jesus, God lives in our hearts. And we get to hear Him through the Holy Spirit. And so, what does that mean for you and I? We don't need to make a tent or a pillow fort for God to be there. When God doesn't give us instructions to build a tabernacle anymore. That was in the past before Jesus. 
But because Jesus came, he does ask us something. What does he ask us? It starts with a B and ends with an Aleve. He asks us to believe. And so let me ask you, do you believe in God? When we pray, we pray to God, right? Do you believe in Jesus, God's son? That he came and he lived a perfect life for us and that he died for the sake of those who would believe him. But on the third day, God raised him up and Jesus is alive next to God the Father waiting to come back again. And that's what God did for us. That's what God did for you. That's what God did for me. And I know that can be a little confusing, right? You might have questions. That's good. Questions are good. Take a moment to uh, click on our video where it says questions from kids, where kids ask uh, important questions that are related to the lesson about the tabernacle. Questions like, what are some ways that we can spend time with God today? Check that out. Remember, our key passage is from Exodus 15 to Right, God's people, they were amazed by God's power and love. Especially after he rescued him from the Egyptians. And they sang a song of praise to him. That song recorded in Exodus 15. Our key passage reminds us of what Jesus did for us. He died to pay for our sins. He made the way to live forever with God. He alone is our salvation, and we worship Him. Again, what is worship? Worship is celebrating the greatness of God. Right? Greatness is celebrating the greatness of God. Well, isn't that awesome? Isn't that a, a, a glorious thing? And so if there's anything that I want to want you to take uh, take away from this is this. Right? This lesson was, you know, God told his people to build a tabernacle so that he would dwell with them. And the Bible verse that I want you to memorize, the key passage, is found in Exodus 15 in the song. It says, The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. Man, what a beautiful thing to memorize. What a beautiful thing to believe. And so, like every week, there's some questions that I want you to discuss uh, with a parent or with an older sibling. Uh, questions to help uh, us both understand the lesson. And there's some activities for you to do. Um, the things that I sent you, um, if you have that, uh, bring that out, take that out, and, and uh, start filling that out, the, the activity for um, our lesson in uh, Unit 6, Section 2. And of course, there's uh, other fun videos for you to watch um, about the lesson of how uh, the people built the tabernacle. As always, know that God loves you so, 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 so much. And uh, Planty loves you, and I love you, and uh, have a great week, and we'll see you guys next week.